So we are talking about the subject of the company's social responsibility, also called corporate social responsibility. Corporate means company. And we said the company is usually judged on three things by the rating agencies. They're usually judged. Can anybody tell me the three things which companies are usually judged on? for the corporate social responsibility? What, what are companies judged on? What three factors do the rating agencies use? You're doing for your assignment. What are the three factors? Environment, economy, social areas. Okay? So that's a sustainable company. Okay? So we're looking at just generally now, what is good for the environment generally? Okay? What is good for the economy generally? Okay? What's good for society generally in this course, this part of the course? So it's a wide, very wide look at the, those things. So the last time we were discussing about uh, different indexes, you mentioned the HDI. And we went on to the question, why do some countries stay poor? So we said we discussed these, each of these reasons on the checklist today. So can somebody close the windows at the back of the room, on the side of the room? Thank you. May it help a little bit. start with geography. So here is the map of the world and we have uh, different settlements here. Yellow line is 500,000 to 1 million. Yellow, five triangle. So where is Korea? Korea is full. Triangle, right? Uh, red triangle, 1 to 5 million. Brown triangle over 5 million. What do you notice about the brown triangles? Where are the brown triangles? Where are all the brown triangles? Where are all the brown triangles? The brown triangle is more than 5 million in people, you see. Where are they located? Also in developing countries, Mexico, India, right? Where are they located? They're all located in coastal areas. Do you understand coastal areas? Near to the coast. So in geography. Why are the coastal areas? If we're not in the coastal area, why might we be poorer? Not in the coastal area. Not in the coastal area. Not in the coastal area. Not many people living there and poorer. Hmm? Too isolated from what? Uh, from other, other countries. Why? Mm. This, one, this one has five countries. One, two, three, four, five countries around it. Isolated, but maybe not isolated from other countries. Isolated from what? Hmm? Isolated from the ports. Do you understand? Trade. How do people move things around the world? Ships is the easiest way and cheapest way to move things. Okay? We could go by land from uh, Korea all the way across to Spain. Do they transport by land? Oh, it's too heavy and costs too much on the roads. So it's easier to go by ship. In the summertime, maybe we can go this way. Otherwise, we can go. Here's a very important uh, point the Suez Canal in Egypt. There was a lot of wars about this. There's a canal which goes through here. 
a lot of ships can go through here. Okay. All the Suez Canal, and then Spain this way. Okay. So if we are on the coast, we have an advantage. We can have a big city. What about Korea? Is Korea okay? Two big cities, Busan and Seoul. Port. Port. You understand port? Yes. So geography, so some of these landlocked countries, especially landlocked means, landlocked means there's no port or no way to the sea. Okay, the landlocked country has a problem. They have to pay money to transport the goods over through other countries. Here's the average distance to the major, these are the major ports around the world. Okay. Some countries is very far to the major ports. A red country would be poorer. Canada, almost everybody lives within 50 kilometers. I think 90% of the population of Canada lives within 50 kilometers of the American border. Not many people live up in this part. Okay. Uh, other issues we mentioned here is, uh, do they have... Uh, Resor their geography, do they have resources, right? So, here's the world's coal reserves. So, do you understand coal? Coal. Oil, do you understand oil? Yeah. Coal is dirtier energy than oil. But you burn the coal, it's black. Black color, you can burn it. It creates energy. So we can see China has no coal. So China uses coal, that's one problem with pollution in China. Coal is very cheap. Okay. UK used a lot of coal before, gave it the advantage in the Industrial Revolution. The type of coal the UK had was very close to the ground, so easy to take out, and had them during the Industrial Revolution. The US also used, could use their coal reserves. You can see Africa, South America, not many coal. In Australia, a lot of coal. Not so much these days, but still for this developing economy like China, the coal helps, right? But especially a couple of hundred years ago, help the countries to develop. What about oil? Who has all the oil? Yes. Uh, you can see this is the country is made by the size of the oil reserves. Saudi Arabia, Iraq. Kuwait is a very small country with massive oil, right? Do you know that the US and the UK decided to save Kuwait because Iraq, Saddam Hussein, in the early 90s, he said, we're taking over Kuwait. It's a very small country. And the UK and the US said, no, you can't do that. That's against the freedom of the people. We're going to save the poor people from Kuwait. Right? In the meantime, in Africa, a lot of countries is taking over, over other countries and killing all the people, genocide. US and UK, oh, that doesn't matter, <laughs> right? No, we have to save the people from Kuwait, right? People from Kuwait need to be saved from Iraq. Why do you think the UK and the US cared about people in Kuwait so much? Hmm? Do you think the UK and the US really care about the people in Kuwait? Why did they try to keep Kuwait separate from Iraq? Oil, right? Well done. <laughs> According to Hillary Clinton, why did uh, George Bush decide to invade Iraq in, in the year 2001? Official reason, he said, Iraq has uh, nuclear weapons. Right? Did Iraq have nuclear weapons? No, it was wrong. He made a mistake. Oh, sorry. I thought you had nuclear weapons. I'll just take all the oil anyway. Doesn't matter. Right? By the way, I came here anyway, so I'll take the oil. Sorry about the mistake about the nuclear weapon. Right? So you can understand the US is quite interested in the Middle East. right? But that's normal. When we had the Roman Empire, we talked about the empires before. The empire always try to take the resource from the other countries, okay? Uh, of course, Saddam Hussein wasn't a very nice person anyway in Iraq. These days with Iran, the US has a problem with Iran. 
the US has a problem with Russia, the US has a problem with Venezuela, okay? Major oil producers. Uh, <coughs> we can see a trend there. US is good friends with Saudi Arabia. Okay, why? Saudi Arabia buy a lot of arms from the US. They spend a lot of money on US arms, like fighter jets, billions and billions of dollars, right? And price of oil is in dollars, US dollars, okay? So anyway, it helps us to understand geopolitics. Do you understand geopolitics? 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 Polit world politics, <laughs> geography in the world, okay? So who has the oil reserves helps us to understand what's happening in the world, a little bit, okay? We said that Afghanistan is always between Russia and uh, Kazakhstan here, between Russia and the West. Uh, climate affects the geography, affects the economy. Here we have the climate classification, okay? So we can see that here we have this is the kind of green area is kind of uh, good, better climate, right? So we can see that the world uh, around this area, the US here, we can see. This is like the corn belt in the US, makes a lot of corn and grains. Across to France, maybe Spain a little bit dry, England, right? So this is the main, this is main agricultural base in the US because of the climate. And in Europe the same, because of the climate. And here in Brazil, okay, Australia, just on the coast. The main settlements in Australia are on the coast where the climate is better. Sydney, Melbourne is here, okay? What can we see over here? Japan, Korea, climate is okay, China, okay? Other countries have a little bit uh, warmer climate uh, with more severe types of climate, very cold here. So climate also affects the poverty. Uh, malaria, do you understand malaria? Do you like mosquitoes? When are the mosquitoes coming back? Have you seen any mosquitoes yet? Yes? Yes. When? Last this again? Last night? Started? I don't, that's one thing I don't like about Korea, you have mosquitoes. We don't have mosquitoes in Ireland. Or Europe. In Europe. They don't have mosquitoes. Right? There used to be, in the past, nowadays we can see this is malaria. Malaria is carried by mosquito. Disease carried by mosquito. Okay, very severe here in sub-Saharan Africa. But uh, we have other areas here. Malaria has basically been wiped out. Very little. Okay, some parts of Australia, Indonesia, are still there. So malaria is holding back countries. Maybe the workers don't go there. Catch the disease makes you kind of tired, more tired during the day. Okay. So, for some countries around here, they have a lot of problems, right? Far away from the port, they have malaria, okay, these so-called transitional economies. Climate is not good, very dry. Uh, policy. So we need to use the policy to try and get out of these. Poverty checklist. Okay, sorry, uh, we should have talked about cultural barrier. Uh, do you know the caste system in, in uh, India? Yes. Who can explain how does the caste system work? How does the caste system work? Some people said yes. Who can explain to me how does it work? There are four 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 rebels in the caste system. Yes. So Go on, nobody else knows, so it's okay, you can say whatever you want. So lower systems, right? Four levels. Lower level person can touch the higher level person. Untouchables? Yes. And 
They can't touch. They can't touch. People are there. People can't touch them. They can marry with between the different level. No marriage. Okay, and friends. So, uh, even though the top level person is younger than high level person, yes, the high level person can touch her. Okay. It is no matter. Hard to get jobs. Yes. Right? So they're supposed to be designed by like predestination, right? In the Hindu religion they believe you're born again. So they think you were born again as an untouchable because you did something bad in the last life, right? Also they think cows. People can come back as cows. That's why you see the cow in the middle of the road, right? So uh, they have this kind of system. So the people can't move up. They're trapped in this system for their lives. So this is one reason for poverty in, in India, right? Even though we have capitalism there, and the Indian economy is, is developing, we still have that problem where the people can't move up in society. Do you know the American dream? <coughs> yes. American dream is the opposite, right? Because a lot of countries, if, even though they don't have a serious system as this, a lot of countries, history, this was present, right? In the Roman Empire, in Europe, they made the people like that a little bit. If your family in Roman Empire, your family was a trader, you were a trader. Your family was a politician, you were a politician. Your family was a soldier, you were a soldier, that kind of way, okay? In the Normans, the English system, very similar. They had the peasant, farm worker, and the lord, and the trader in between, okay? The family usually followed the same. The family stayed in the same group. Why right? didn't change out their group? Are you guys going to follow your parents in Korea? Hmm? So uh, that's changing the class in the UK very rarely. But then they started this country called the United States, where everybody could go, anybody could go there. There was a lot of immigration, so it was more on based on merit. You understand merit? Yeah. People's achievement was based on merit. That's the American dream, right? Any very poor person can go to the US and become rich or become into the high class. In Europe, they still have, not the same as the US, some countries, they still have a kind of class system, right? Where it depends on what school you went to, right? Or your accent or where your family is from, your family's network and connections. Okay, they did some research in England, they found that the wealthier students got a better paid job than the not so wealthy students because even though they have the same degree and the same score, the family of the wealthy students had some friend or acquaintance who could help them to get the internship or those kind of things, right? Uh, so they were able to be earning a higher salary after a few years. Okay, in the UK, that's even in the UK, okay? Uh, so, this kind of cultural barrier can stop the economy from developing. In India, the people, maybe the kids, they leave school early because they think, anyway, I'm not going to move up, so I'll just leave school and I don't get the education, okay? And the economy doesn't develop because there may be some very talented people in these levels, but the talented people don't get the chance. There's a book called The White Tiger about a guy who grows up in India. And India's economy is growing nowadays, okay? And everybody, people are doing better. But there's still a lot of kids who leave school early, like the guy in the book, left school early because his family needed the money. So he started working with his uncle. And he saw no way to get out of the trap, like poverty trap, okay? He didn't get the education, so he couldn't move forward. He left school early. So, those kind of cultural barriers are also the problem. So the question is, what kind of policies? So discuss with your partner. Your job is to think about different countries have different problems. So think about each of the problem, what policy are you going to do to change, to solve the problem? If you're the government, or you're working for the IMF, do you know the IMF? IMF help, gives loans to the countries in trouble, but also gives them conditions. Okay, you can have the loan, 
but you need to do what I say. Okay, so pretend you're the IMF, you're giving the loan to the country, and you're, they have this kind of problem. What are you going to suggest to the country? So discuss with your partner for each one. What policy are you going to suggest to them? questions to answer, right? That's what a lot of NGOs and organizations try to work on. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the policies. Okay. If our geography, we are landlocked, uh, then we can build roads, internet, develop our internet industry, okay? make better relations with the countries around us so we can. They allow us to use their port. We're in the country which has too dry climate. We need a good irrigation system. Do you understand irrigation? Water supply system. Irrigation is, uh, you can see in Korea around the rice field, they have some like ditch for the water. Okay? So some way to, California has that problem in Spain, right? Some way to make more efficient use of the water. Heavy disease burden, like malaria or other diseases, we need to improve our health system. In the uh, Philippines, you have some natural hazards, like floods. Do you think, how do they detect and prepare for the floods in the Philippines? Do you understand detect? Uh, detecting the flood? Yes. Yeah, we have a flood island. It's, it's attracting the food and people to prepare and evacuate the low areas. Okay, and then how do you prepare? Uh, they, they tell you the flood is coming, what do you do? Start panting? Ah, run around? Ah, <laughs> hmm? uh, they give System, right? Good system. Lack, we don't have many fossil fuels. We need to be more energy efficient and use more renewable energy. Okay. So uh, here we have uh, on the culture. Uh, we have some countries. The women have a lot more children than other countries. What do you think? Usually, is the country wealthier country that has a lot of children or not wealthier country? 
not, not welfare country usually, right? So these days, women have preferred to have more free time and also working in their careers, okay? So they have a lower number of children and then they can participate in the workforce. So you understand, participate in the workforce. So the world's GDP went up a lot when the women started to participate more in the work, workforce. Uh, imagine if half of your country doesn't work, then the, of course the GDP will be lower. So different countries have different cultures about having children. Okay? Which do you think are the countries in the world with the lowest birth rate? What kind of countries have the lowest birth rate? Like Korea. Korea. Okay, we can see the white. Whiter the color is the lower the birth rate. Okay, so we can see that Korea is a almost white color. Japan. Okay, in Europe, in Italy, Germany, Spain, Eastern Europe, it's white as color. They're having less than less than two children per couple, right? So the population should be going down over time. Okay. But here we can see in Sub-Saharan Africa, the transitional economies, they have a lot of children, right? Maybe average between five and seven per couple. Here. Okay. You're not planning to have between five and seven children? No? What about where's the Philippines? Here. Philippines also popular. Very popular. Yeah. How many kids are in your family? How many brothers and sisters? How many brothers and sisters do you have? Uh, two. Four. Four. Two. Two. I mean, like five. Oh. Ireland also. In Europe, Ireland has a higher birth rate. In Latin America, the Middle East, most of Islamic countries has a high, high birth rate. India. Okay. One of the reasons is also kind of a circle. They have more children, it's kind of a little bit like pension. You understand pension? The country doesn't have any pension system. So they need to have more children, then they can look after them when they're older, right? Okay, that kind of thing for the income. And also they can help them with working on the farm in the countryside, in the rural area, and have to work on the farm. So, in some NGOs, they try to change the culture. They try to teach the women about uh, contraception, you understand contraception, that kind of thing. Family planning, planning the family to reduce the number of births. Uh, here is Japan, pyramid, from pyramid to kite. This was Japan in the 50s. This, this is what many of the sub-Saharan transition economies look like now. Okay, Korea is probably going to be the same, right? In the 50s, we had a lot of young people and not many old people. Then, 2005, we have this kind of straight, almost straight, okay? Most people are in the middle ages. And then, by 2055, this is the forecast, we're going to have very few younger people and more older people. <coughs> so, uh, we have the... Also, culture related to education. So, Korea has a strong educational culture, right? Did your mother send you to Hogwarts? <laughs> Did you like going to Hogwarts? No. Why not? Hmm? Did your mother boast with the other mothers? Like, oh, my child goes to English and the piano and the math. <laughs> One, and then the mother says, oh, that's nothing. My child goes to the English and the German and the French and the <laughs> mathematics and the science have one. <laughs> Did your mother do like that when you were a kid? Hmm? That's like culture, right? Do you understand culture? Yes. So Korea has the kind of culture where they think the education is very important, okay? So uh, we can see a similar Shanghai, Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong, okay, Japan, Eastern Asia. So different countries have different cultures. Have you heard of this PISA education ranking? No. Basically they go to the high school and they give the children a standard test, same tests across the world. 
like 16 or 17, 18 year olds. Test them up, they give them a maths test, they give them a readings test, and they give them a science test. Some random populate sample from the population. And then they see how do they score, and then they compare it to different countries. Okay? Uh, have you heard of the STEM, STEM subjects? STEM. Science. Technology. What? Right? Engineering. <laughs> Mathematics. Okay? That is important for every economy these days, the STEM. They want students to study those subjects too, because that helps the economy to have innovation and develop. Okay? So we can see that Korea has good future for ST STEM. Okay? Because the screen students got good scores in the test. Here's Korea, here, 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 okay? How are you ranking? So, uh, the countries who are scoring higher here, the idea is their economy, their economy is going to be better now and in the future, okay? As those students graduate, study these subjects and develop, okay? So, uh, Culture of education is important to the economy. Why does Korea have such a strong culture of education? Can anybody tell me? Why does Korea have such a strong culture for education? You're Korean, I'm not Korean. You have to tell me. <laughs> Don't have much resources, so you have to study instead, right? You have to study hard. You could just say, "Oh, we've got no resources. Let's just stay at home and watch TV all day, right?" But instead, you can study and develop and develop the country, okay? Uh, The role of politics is important because on the list, one, two, three, four of them were related to politics. Bad policies, financial insolvency, no money, poor governance, corruption, and geopolitics. Even for Afghanistan, politics is involved in geopolitics. Okay? So we need the government to do their job properly. Government is here, bad policies. Right? Number two, bad policies. The government needs to spend money in the right areas. Okay? Uh, I met a person from Portugal once, and Portugal and Ireland in the 70s was about the same. Both of them on the outside of Europe. Do you know Portugal? Yeah. Portugal on the outside of Spain. Ireland on the outside of England, right? So they got a lot of money from Europe in the 70s, from Germany and France, to help develop their economies. But the Portuguese side guy said the difference was Ireland spent the money well, but Portugal wasted all the money, right? So the government has to make the decision to, to invest the money in the right areas. So for example, in Ireland, they made the free university education, okay? They developed a lot of motorways, you understand the motorway, okay? Motorway for the cars to go quickly. They invested in the health service, but in Portugal, they had some corrupt problem also with tied with corruptions, corrupt officials who invested the money in some projects that their friend was doing, paid too much money okay, to their friend. The project didn't work or it didn't go well. So the government have to decide, China is investing a lot of money these days in infrastructure, in the metros, motorways and so on to develop. Okay? Uh, the government also has to uh, look after the policy of law. The legal policy is important. Okay, for example, if we have deregulation of finance, like we had in the UK and Ireland and the US, we can have financial crisis, which can affect the economy. Okay, so the government needs to make proper laws too to help the company to develop, country to develop. So here we can see this is poor governance. We already looked at before the. Corruption Perceptions Index, okay? But we can see here again, 
red, red is color, people think, perceptions. People's perception is, this country's culture has a lot of corruption. Yellow color, people think, this country's con culture does not have a lot of corruption. Okay? So you can see that this is one area that Korea can improve on. Okay? Korea is scoring highly on the other things. HDI didn't include corruption. Okay? HDI didn't include corruption. But uh, we can see, again, the same group of countries, uh, very yellow color, right? Lower perceived corruption. In Europe, we know that the Nordic countries usually have the lowest corruption, right? Finland, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, okay? Ireland has more than, than these countries. It's a redder color. Okay? Italy, Southern Europe, Greece, we also have this kind of corruption problem. Okay? Do you understand the problem of corruption? Yeah. Is corruption good for the economy or bad for the economy? Bad. Yeah. Why is corruption bad for the economy? It's the money, man. Wasting money? Mm -hmm. How can you waste money with corruption? Yes, should be used to develop the health and the education and the services, right? So they use it for their own Yes, often you can give, give the contract to their friends, okay? Even in the jobs, it's bad just in the general private industry because let's say you're the best person for the job, okay? You compare you and you, right? You're the best person, you're better than her, much better, okay? But you pay me some bribe. And then I give you the job because you paid me the bribe. Okay? Do you understand? Okay, so then in the end, or just I know her, I'm friends with her family, right? So I give her the job. So in the end, the company is not going to perform as well. If she got the job, the company would perform better. Okay? But she got the job. Maybe she knows that she paid the bribe or her family's there, so she comes to work, doesn't care, right? Oh hello. Yes, I'll be in my office all day. Bye. I close the door and just don't do anything all day, right? You can't fire me, right? If you do, I'll tell about the bride. Okay, so we can have that problem. We have that problem in Greece and a little bit in Spain and Italy where we have a lot of government workers who uh, uh, got their job and they have their job for the full time, right? Maybe they're not very productive, but they can't, it's hard to fire them or uh, that kind of way. So we can have bad results for the economy. Uh, one thing we can compare countries on is social expenditure as a share of GDP. Do you understand social expenditure? Spending money on what? What is social spending? Healthcare. What else? Infrastructure, education, services. Okay, most a lot of elections, people have a disagreement about social expenditure. Okay, like in the U.S. now, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. Okay, Democratic Party wants to spend a lot of money, like Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders wants to make the free tuition fees for the university students. Okay, spend a lot of money on healthcare, free healthcare for everybody in the U.S. Okay. But the other side, the Republican Party, don't want to spend a lot of money on those things. Okay? So different people have different ideas about social expenditure. The Nordic countries have highest tax rates in the world, like 50, 60 percent. Okay? Incidentally, Bernie Sanders lives in Vermont, senator for Vermont, which is in...